Welcome to Radcliffe, Kentucky. We're here at North Harden High School. It's postseason time, the 17th District Girls Basketball Tournament underway today. Four o'clock, we'll have the Lady Eagles of Fort Knox taking on the Lady Bruins of Central Harden. And uh, we've got a matchup for you today. It's exciting to get the postseason started. We've got a great tournament and uh, some intrigue along the way. And what I consider one of the three favorites to win the region championship, not just possibly the district championship, that's the North Harden Lady Trojans led by Coach Vaughn Sison. So really excited for them. Today we're going to see the Lady Bruins and the Lady Eagles. Start with the Lady Bruins, some really interesting things going on here. Uh, Juliana Stith uh, leading the way with 19 points a game. She's an all-region performer. She's been fantastic, doing every for the, everything for this team, handling the basketball, scoring the basketball, uh, just leading everywhere on the floor. So enjoy watching number 11, Juliana Stith. Kaitlyn Huggins, number 32, is one of the big surprises. Not for me. I know she had all kinds of potential. My daughter, Katie Gray, was the key primary post player for this Lady Bruins squad last year, and I saw Kaitlyn as a freshman last year show a ton of promise. Tall, strong, and she has started to put together some of the physicality needed to be effective in the post, especially playing in this district. She's also started to bring her offensive game just a few nights ago against Moore High School, putting up a career high 23 points in the post. So, Caitlin Huggins, uh, who averages eight and a half points and nine, and nine rebounds a game, is really a presence inside. So, we'll look for Caitlin and see how effective she is tonight. Certainly, uh, the senior on the squad, Allie Link, uh, her game has started to improve. Uh, a little bit of a rough start shooting the ball early in the season, really starting to shoot the ball better, really handling the ball better, doing a better job all over the floor, maybe kind of falling into a little bit of a different role as the second option as far as scoring is concerned this year. She averages just seven points a game, but that was about four or five points a game about three or four weeks ago. She has really started to score the basketball, shoot it like everybody knows she's capable and so Allie Link, the senior, is going to be a big, uh, uh, important uh, factor for this Lady Bruins squad and their success in the postseason here. Uh, Gracie Blair, Sam Nelson, or some of the others. The key here, and it's really interesting, as the season has gone along and the teams, the opponents of the Lady Bruins have started to realize how solid Juliana Stith is, that she is a top player, uh, could have been a, a easily – uh, named uh, Player of the Year in the region. That's what a great season she's had. But uh, as people have realized that, she has started to face more and more pressure, and her numbers have started to fall during the course of the last four weeks, the last month of the season. Not her effectiveness, but just some of the numbers. And again, she's just drawing so much more pressure every game as people know who she is and have to put that on her. But the good news is, is overall the team is much improved. I think with with uh, losing some productivity from Juliana Stitt, they've had to start to find productivity other places. And again, players like Gracie Blair, Sam Nelson, Allie Link, all of their scoring totals, their averages have gone up in the last month of the season. They're averaging four points, now they're averaging five, which shows just generally they're scoring more and being a more effective um, for this Lady Bruins squad. So that's important. Uh, coming off the bench, some of the younger kids, sophomores and freshmen, Gabby Callahan, Abby Vandenberg, Chloe Johnson, Mariano Resto Santos, they're going to have to also play their part in spot minutes for this Lady Bruins squad to have a chance. Now, the X Factor, number 22, Hattie Duckworth, just back five games ago from uh, an ACL tear back in the summer and some summer uh, – summer uh, camps that they were playing games in. Blew the knee out, has just returned. You'll see number 22 wearing the knee brace tonight. And if Hattie can become a scoring option for this squad, uh, they're going to be a really tough out for the Lady Trojans in the semifinals. Hattie Duckworth has averaged five points a game in those five games, so she's off to a good start. She's a great scoring option. She can really shoot it, but I'm sure 
just trying to find her way, trying to find her way with the team, trying to get comfortable again on the floor. I'm sure she's excited to be out there. Hattie is a real shooter, one of the best two or three shooters on this squad from the perimeter. Uh, just a matter of can she find her rhythm, can she find her way, get a few open looks and knock them down, and then gain some confidence. On the other side, uh, we've got the Lady Eagles. Now, again, the, the, the Lady Bruins are led by Coach Glenn Peterson. They've got a 12-16 and 16 record on the season. And uh, they are the four seed, the five seed. The Lady Eagles of Fort Knox, led by Coach David Arms, they are 0-19, a real rough season for this squad here. You know, it, it's it's really tough, folks, for this Lady Eagles squad. Anytime they get a little bit of traction, the, the rug kind of gets pulled out from under them. Last year, Coach Arms, I believe, won eight games. It was the best they had done for a while. They had a pretty good squad together, a very young and talented squad, and several of those Lady Eagles, uh, one through graduation, two through transfer. They've lost those uh, uh, linchpin pieces that they had, and that has resulted in a really rough season playing a lot of young girls, a lot of girls that just don't have the skill set to compete at the District 17 level. Uh, you are going to be uh, treated to uh, seeing seventh grader, number 12, Charlie Honor who is talented, is a leading scorer at six points a game. So, again, when you're leading scorer as a seventh grader, you know you've had a rough go for the season. It's not really any fault of, uh, of Coach Arms or even the girls in some cases. It's a situation in which they find themselves with the, uh, the amount of turnover in the roster uh, due to uh, military and uh, transfers orders that are received and moves that occur with families on post. Then also, again, uh, really good young players like Asia Charles, uh, who played for them last year, who's now a key piece in playing really well for the Lady Trojans of North Harden. Uh, they've kind of moved out here to Radcliffe, and she is now playing there. Obviously, Lachey Jones as well, who's a linchpin piece now for the Lady Bulldogs at John Harden. She's a sophomore, and Again, those two have been really important to two of the better teams around here and the number one seed and the number three seed in this tournament. So it's uh, two really important pieces that would have made a big difference in this uh, in the season for this Lady Eagles squad. So whether it's military orders and transfers or uh, losing players who are uh, um, transferring schools locally here, just not much of a chance to compete for some of these young girls. You're going to see Charlie Honor, number 12, the seventh grader. Number four, Amara Haley, second leading scorer. She's a ninth grader. Uh, Kayla Oliveira is a freshman. Chloe Nelson's a freshman. Uh, Jayla Richardson's a seventh grader. So they've got quite a few of the youngsters out here. It's basically a middle school team. There are a couple of seniors uh, and juniors out here. Uh, Donna Soto Castillo, number 23, who is uh, the captain of this squad. Uh, Vanessa Oyabode and uh, Abigail Genado. So they are seniors and juniors. So three of those, but the rest are freshmen and younger. And um, several of them much younger. Again, the seventh grader, uh, Charlie Honor, and the seventh grader, Jaylee Richardson. So it's a young squad. It's a squad, again, if they can develop together, if they can really work on their skills increase their skills in four or five years, they could be fantastic. But can you even keep them when you get a couple of girls who can play? Are they going to be transferred? Are they going to transfer, you know, family-wise off post to another post somewhere? Or maybe even um, the girls themselves transfer schools, maybe come over here to North Harden or go to John Harden, as several of the girls from last year's squad have done. So a tough situation for David Arms. They're making the best of it. I do want to, as we see this, again, there's not much doubt as to the outcome of this ball game. It will be the Lady Bruins uh, facing uh, North Harden at 6 o'clock on Tuesday night. Tuesday night's the semifinals. It's going to be amazing. Uh, again, Central Harden and North Harden in the 8 o'clock game. We'll have John Harden and Elizabethtown, two fantastic games. We'll preview some of that uh, tonight as we watch the game so you guys are fully aware of what you're going to be seeing. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we're seeing tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing Charlie Honor play tonight. Uh, and then see, honestly, 
can the Lady Bruins kind of get something going, maybe find a rhythm in this building and make some shots. And we are about ready for the playing of the National Anthem. We'll take a break for just a moment here for the Anthem. And we'll have the starting lineups announced as well as PA announcer Malachi Mullins will do the honors. Now for the starting lineups against PA announcer Malachi Mullins. So now the starting lineup for the Lady Eagles. So the starters for the Lady Eagles, Charlie Honore, honor with an E on the end, Honore. Amara Halley, ninth grade. Kaylee Oliveira is ninth grade. Diana Soto Castillo, I believe, is a junior. Chloe Nelson, a freshman. So um, youngsters everywhere. For the Lady Bruins, it is going to be Hattie Duckworth in the starting lineup. Fantastic. Gracie Blair. Again, one thing Hattie Duckworth brings this squad is some more size, which they lack. So we've got Juliana Stith, Allie Link, Hattie Duckworth, Gracie Blair, and Caitlin Huggins to start it off. And as a junior, a sophomore, a senior, another sophomore, and a junior. So only one senior in the lineup, only one senior really on the squad for this Lady Bruins team. So. It's a team that really could challenge next year for this district title. It's going to be a tough road for them this year, but certainly behind Juliana Stith, they've got a shot. So Huggins will win the uh, initial tip ahead to Blair. Can't get it to go right off. Gets her own rebound. Going to look back outside to Stith. Stith's going to set it up. Man-to-man -man look for the Lady Eagles. Ch Charlie Honore is guarding Stith. Link's going to go to Stith. To Blair, and again, trying to move the ball. Back door cut from Stith a little bit off. Duckworth runs it down. Link out top to reset. They're going to reset the offense. Back door cut. Duckworth, she has to fight for it. Gets the rebound. Goes up. Can't get it to go. There'll be a foul called.
Mara Haley, number four, picks up her first foul. Duckworth will go to the line to shoot a pair here. Hattie will knock down the first. One to nothing, 7.20 to go in the first quarter. Postseason is underway here in District 17. Rattles in and out. And there's a rebound for Huggins, but couldn't get it to, to go on the putback. Soto Castillo gets it to uh, Honore. Charlie's got the gold shoes working, the green and gold Fort Knox. Good screen set there. Good look inside, but Huggins pokes it away. She was looking for 15, excuse me, it was 15 Oliveira who uh, set the screen. It was number 21, Chloe Nelson, who uh, was the target of the pass. Cuts, no, not able to find anybody. Honore will run it down. Charlie gets it to 15 again. That's Oliveira. Oliveira guarded by Stith. Knocked away. Lose it. Duckworth out ahead of everybody. Going up with it will score it. So Hattie Duckworth's got the three Lady Bruin points to start off here again. Fresh off the injury from last summer. Uh, Hattie starting to make an impact early in the ball game here. Man-to-man -man look for the Lady Bruins. They'll play a lot of 2-3 zone. A little 1-3-1, one, one, little 3-2, but right now in a man-to-man -man look, they're going to call an illegal screen. And that was on 15, Kaylee Oliveira, her first team second as she was moving when she set the screen, kind of caught with the hip and the leg as she set a great screen on the previous possession, but that one was uh, not illegal screen. Link and a drive blocked. Number four, Mara Halley. Wow, nice look. Little out of control, Charlie Honore. Again, she's got a lot of speed for a seventh grader. She's very athletic, small, but very athletic. And there's Link up ahead for the bucket on the pass from Juliana Stith, who had created the turnover. Diana Soto Castillo with it. Shot on the way, no good. Huggins comes up with the rebound. Going up high for her second board. Up ahead, Duckworth. Just a little off balance, so couldn't get it to go. Link is outside. Three on the way. Had her feet set. That's going to go. This is what I really wanted to see here. Again, it's 8 nothing, 534 to go in the first. Is can some of these Lady Bruin shooters really start to feel comfortable in the gym? Some people just shoot better in certain gyms. Lady Bruins have always shot pretty well here at North Harden. It would be really helpful for them seeing the bucket, seeing some shots go through, maybe getting some confidence as they go into Tuesday's matchup with the district favorite. Now, again, I call North Harden Lady Trojans the district favorite. The only loss they've had in district this year was to the Lady Panthers of Elizabethtown, a three-point loss at Elizabethtown. So uh, Lady Panthers are uh, – not to be overlooked in this scenario. Inside, Blair Strong inside, can't get it to go. Maybe Hallie's second, it is. Mara Halley, her second team's third, and Gracie Blair's gonna go to the line to shoot a pair. So uh, Lady Bruins being patient, working the basketball, working their offense. Honestly, I really feel like that if you gave the ball to Juliana Stith, she can take the ball. Even Caitlin Huggins, they can take the ball and score it at will. Um, off the dribble for Stith, obviously in the post for Huggins. Blair making two there. That's a real nice uh, start for her to see two go through the basket. Probably very loose. Might be a little feeling, a little more pressure Tuesday night at 6 o'clock when they tip it off with one of the region favorites, the Lady Trojans, on their home floor. So tough ask for this Lady Bruins squad. Same not poke free. Oh, it was not a foul, but um, they're going to call a foul on Juliana Stith, her first, team's first, as she poked one back, kind of a back tap, reaching around and tapping the ball free from Diana Soto Castillo. She's got the ball right now, knocked away by... Oh, gee whiz. Stith goes down hard as she was trying to get the ball. Keep safe from going out of bounds. Rolled her ankle. Looks like she's fine. As soon as you see something like that in a game like this where the uh, the uh, 
outcome will not be in doubt. And you see the best player for a squad roll her ankle. Fortunately, she's up, she's moving, doesn't show any ill effects. They're going to say Diana Soto Castillo carried the ball, and it'll go back to the Lady Bruins. 10 0, 424 in here. And uh, Juliana Stith looks fine. She's got some bounce in her step. Nice screen. She's going all the way to the rim. She's going to get fouled. And she'll go to the line to shoot a pair. That may be Amara Halley's third. So, uh, could be Haley. It's H A L L E Y. But I'm going to call her Amara Halley. So, number four in some foul trouble already. Stiff knocks down the first. Again, Juliana not having to be quite as aggressive. We're going to see some liberal substitutions here. Abby Vandenberg checking in, Chloe Johnson checking in, Gabby Callahan checking in, Duckworth, Blair, and Huggins checking out. The floor general will remain on the floor. That's Juliana Stitt. She makes the second. 12 nothing, 414 to go here. We certainly expect to see a running clock in this ball game as we get into the second half. Vandenberg tipped it, but was able to pick it up without double dribbling, I guess. Nice pass inside to Link. She was not comfortable. Finds Stith. Stith going to drive. Looking for Link. A look. Callahan almost wasn't paying attention for that one. Back to Link. With some of the new folks on the floor, the offense not moving as fluidly as it was. Looks like they are still in a man-to-man -man look, but Vandenberg not guarded. Now number 22 is going to get over and guard 22. It's Armani, Armani Tucker who's checked in. There goes Stith driving. Charlie Honore will knock the ball loose. They're going to call her for her first team's fifth, and that'll send Stith to the line to shoot a pair in the double bonus already. Five team fouls, one team foul on the Lady Bruins. 3.20 to go, it's 12 nothing. Not an electric feeling right now in the building with, uh, with this particular game, obviously, but Diana Soto Castillo checking back in. Charlie Honore checking out. But Tuesday night, come Tuesday night, this place will be buzzing. Chloe Johnson comes up with the rebound there. Double dribble turnover on Juliana Stith. So the uh, starting backcourt in, but the front court all youngsters for the Lady Bruins right now. Link and Stith on the floor. They've gone to this 3-2 zone look. Vandenberg there, travel by Diana Soto Castillo as there was a trap that came. Vandenberg was on the wing and the 3-2 stepped up and Soto Castillo got a little nervous and pulled her pivot foot. One on one here out top. There's Stitt, this is the kind of stuff that happens one of these games. Stitt just trying to get her teammates involved. Looks for the diagonal pass to Vandenberg on the post, but she had an open four-foot look herself, Stitt. She's got to go ahead and just play her game and be aggressive. It's 13-0, 240 to go here in the uh, first quarter. Shot up and in. Wow. Off the side of the backboard and in. Mara Halley has two. 13-2 is the score. Stiff has it. She'll shoot the three. That's off the mark. Rebound to Halley. Steal on the outlet pass, but uh, Link stepped on the sideline, so Lady Eagles will have the basketball here. Again, I'm sure Coach Peterson not wanting to give anything away. They're not going to have any full-court pressure, half-court pressure. They're playing their two base defenses, the man look and the 3-2 uh, look that they've been running quite a bit of the season here. Out top, here comes a bunch of the Lady Bruins, we're going to have four new Lady Bruins on the floor here in just a moment. Out of bounds, dribbled out. Number 15, Kaylee Oliveira couldn't hang on to the basketball right there. And so four new Lady Bruins, uh, Caitlin Huggins, Gracie Blair, Mariana Resto Santos, and 
Patty Duckworth back in. Allie Link will remain on the floor checking out. Gabby Callahan, Abby Vandenberg, Chloe Johnson, and Juliana Stith. So, again, a little bit of a lackluster performance. They're trying to run their sets and be as sharp as possible here, the Lady Bruins, but certainly not in their normal look. Turnover going the other way. Knocked loose, though. Link will turn it, gets it back the other way. Going cross court to Duckworth. Almost got it to go. They're going to call a foul. I believe that's on number 21, Chloe Nelson. Her first. Two shots coming. This is the 16th foul. Duckworth at the line. She'll shoot two. Rolls around and out. That used all of the rim. 1.30 to go here in the first period. And that one's short. Huggins has the rebound, though. Off the backboard, couldn't get it to go. There's Blair with the rebound. Duckworth for three off the front iron, and Honoré's got the rebound. She's going to get it to uh, Soto Castillo, guarded by Mariana Resto Santos. It looks like they're back to a man-to-man -to -man look. Lady Bruin shot up, blocked by Mariana Resto Santos. It's Duckworth to push the ball back up the floor. Gonna call a foul there again. Fouls on 22, Armani Tucker. And that'll send Duckworth back to the line. She made her first two on her first trip to the line. Excuse me, made one out of two. Uh, it was 0 for 2 on that last trip. Again, Duckworth, a very good shooter. Maybe not using enough legs there. Barely gets that one to creep over the front of the rim. And the second one's good as well. Duckworth has five points to start the game. 15 to two, Lady Bruins in front. 55 seconds to go here in the first. Again, kind of a lackluster performance for the Lady Bruins to this point. Inside, number 22's got it. Armani Tucker trying to get it. Charlie Honore, but it's Link. Oh, just way too much on the breakaway. Resto Santos. In the backcourt, stops it. Honore has it. Went to the left hand, which he shouldn't have. Just lost control. She's just a little out of control. It's a seventh grader. All kinds of speed. The ability to handle the ball, but just out of control. It's got to slow down. Coach Arms saying the same thing to her, saying, slow down. Take it easy. You can't just run by everybody. There's Link with 19 seconds to go, running the offense. Now it's Duckworth. Nice cut. Resto Santos off the glass and good. Mariana has the ability to score the ball. She does that in bunches in JV games. Charlie Honore with six seconds, kind of walking up. She's going to go hard here now. She loses it again. They're going to say it was knocked out by Allie Link, and it'll stay with the Lady Eagles. There's only 2.5 seconds to go here. 17 to 2, Lady Bruins in front. Kind of weird to say that's lackluster. Honore knows she's got to get that up. Does, but just a little short with a lot of defensive pressure from Link. So we'll uh, end quarter one, 17-2, Lady Bruins in front. This is a Hardin County Education Community Television Student Production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. For those who are serving our country in the military, a discount is available. Etown Apartments is a family owned and operated management service with over 30 years of combined experience. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling is a family owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for your recycling needs. Located at 311 Steel Drive in Elizabethtown. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. Etown Exterminating is a locally owned, family-run pest control company and has been serving hard meat, Grayson, and Nelson counties in the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, 
Termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles. Their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. So Soto Castillo will inbounds here. Get it to Honore. 17-2, Lady Bruins in front. Second quarter underway here. Mara Holly with three fouls. They're just going to keep her on the floor. Coach Arms is going to go with his uh, key girls here. He's substituted several, but uh, going to go mostly with his key girls here. Good screen set there, but Honore shot blocked. Size and age discrepancy, and Duckworth is up ahead quickly. Wow, she is so solid and uh, easily scores on the breakout there. It was a good screen. Set by number 21, Chloe Nelson, but Honore couldn't get the shot off. And there it is again, just an ill-advised pass as Link's got it. Link gets the bucket and the foul. She'll go to the line as Honore is called for her second. Team's first of the second quarter. So Link now has seven points to lead all scores. Well, tied with Hattie Duckworth. And Allie Link will go to the line to try to the three-point play bounces over the rim and in. So she is the leading scorer now with eight. And Charlie Honore's got the ball again. Donna Soto Castilla, her backcourt mate there. They need to go ahead and start moving the ball now. Well, they can't screen, came and left. Screen out top there, good screen there. Two screens trying to get, ooh, she pulled that back foot. So Honore just a little. out of her depth in that situation in the corner. Went around a couple of pretty nice screens, but the uh, Lady Bruins did a great job of um, switching on those. Number one has checked in. That's Abigail Gennato off the Huggins screen. Stiff all the way to the rim. She's got five here, three free throws. That's her first field goal of the game. 24 to two, 6.34 to go in the second. Again, Lady Eagles in 0-19 season. They have struggled even against lesser competition. They've uh, come up just a little short. Gracie Blair commits the foul. So the Lady Eagles will have the ball out of bounds. They're duck with guarding Soto Castilla. Trapped in the corner trying to go into the post, but it's a turnover. Duckworth gets it to Stiff. She's looking ahead, trying to maybe find Link in the corner. And she could have there. Duckworth open. Duckworth sets her feet. Shot on the way. Back iron again. I want to see if Duckworth can kind of find her range. She's a really good shooter. There's Stiff in the lane. Finds Link. Link wide open. Feet set. And it's good. That's what the Lady Bruins need to see. Alla Link knocking down shots. That's her second three, her fourth field goal of the first half. She's got 11 points in the first half. She averages seven, but she has really started to come alive here in the last month of the season, as I mentioned. 27 to two now is the score. Shot on the way, just off the mark, as I believe that was Mara Halley from three-point range. Inside to Blair, great look from Stith, and Blair will finish it off there. Blair's got four. Kind of spread around. The only one that has not gotten the board yet is Caitlin Huggins with the uh, the absence of a true post player here for the Lady Eagles. Again, the Lady Bruins could go to every trip. And the ball's tied up. It will go back to the Lady Bruins. There's number one, Abigail Giannato is trying to get the ball from her teammate who was trapped. I believe that was Soto Castillo, but Lady Bruins are right there to tie her up as soon as she got the ball. But again, Huggins uh, could score at will here, I really feel like. But they just have not looked into the post to get her the ball. Everything else has been open. There's Hattie Duckworth knocking down a three. That's what she needs. She needs to see a few go through the net. And she can be absolutely – this has got to be just a little scary for Coach Ice and watching 
link really start to hit shots and now uh, Duckworth back in the lineup and there she is knocking down a shot getting out in transition even with that massive knee brace on she's been able to get out in transition and score it's 32 to 2 with 4.53 to go here in the second again this game is going to go to a running clock I think that's at 35 points it may not be until the second half though I'm not sure on the ruling on that if you have to wait to the second half to start running the clock or if as soon as it's at a 35 point advantage the clock is running we'll see how uh, see how that works because we're not far from it we're five points from that happening here and uh, Lady Bruins again looking sharp and a couple of their sharp shooters really starting to find their range so again that's uh, probably a little scary for coach Isom I will tell you this it's not scary for Peyton Isom she's sitting over in a chair on her phone and just looks relaxed as can be I don't think she's worried about uh, any of these kinds of things. She's here to um, compete. She doesn't care who it is they throw in front of her. She thinks she's going to win that ball game, that matchup every time. Duckworth knocking it away. They're going to call a foul, a reach on Hattie Duckworth. So the Lady Eagles will have the basketball. Diana Soto Castillo with the ball. They've gone to a 3-2 look this zone. I'm sorry. Nope, they're, they're still in a man look. That was just the way that the uh, Lady Eagles were set up. And Halley stepped on the sideline. Amara Halley steps on the sideline there. And Halley is a freshman. As such, one of the older. Obviously, Diana Soto Castillo is their veteran leader. Stith open for three, and she knocks it down. When these ladies have time and can set up, they can knock them down. Again, getting a little bit of a feel and a look for the rims. This could be useful. They're going to have to be able to slow it down, though, and get their feet set against the Lady Trojans to get these kinds of shots. Link knocks it loose. Soto Castillo gets a good look from in the lane. Can't get it to fall. Huggins with the rebound. She's able to get the outlet. To Stiff and Stiff quickly up the floor for an easy bucket there. She got 10 points in the first half, 37 to two. It is currently a 35 point advantage. We'll see if the clock runs now or they wait. See Sam Nelson about to make her first appearance. Again, this is a strange situation to be playing on a Sunday afternoon. It just doesn't happen much. They're gonna call a foul on number 21. That's Chloe Nelson and uh, Lady Bruins will keep possession. They're going to check in here. Sam Nelson checking in for Hattie Duckworth. I uh, just saw Sam Nelson come into the gym. Sam is an awesome kid. Uh, may have had some other Sunday responsibilities as that's, again, not a normal time, uh, game time for these uh, varsity games. Honore guarding Stith. Stith almost lost a good screen by Huggins. Again, Huggins has Halley just completely held down inside. Just couldn't get it to go. Good move. That's what they could do all game long if they wanted. It's a hell ball possession arrow to the Lady Eagles. Huggins just couldn't get that one to go, but certainly she holds a massive advantage in the interior. Now, She'll be one of the keys to the entire game Tuesday night, Will Huggins, because of the two fantastic post players that the Lady Trojans have, going along with Isom and the two sophomores, Destiny Scott and Casey McKinney, both of whom are number one top type players, um, both, I believe, all region performers. And uh, they, uh, you know, having those two fantastic post players, Caitlin Huggins, number one, has to be able to scrap inside, but she has to do it without getting in foul trouble. If she gets in foul trouble, there are not many options for the Lady Bruins as far as handling the size and skill of the North Harden Lady Trojan post players. Certainly uh, freshman Chloe Johnson is an option. Deep three from Stith, just off the mark. Rebound Sam Nelson. Huggins, there she is, Caitlin Huggins with the bucket. Nelson with the rebound, 39-2, to 2.05 to go here.
travel again. You see Honore just a little out of control. Vandenberg can't get it to go. There's Huggins rebound. No good. Huggins back up. No good. Gets another rebound. Nelson three on the way, and she's got it. Sam Nelson showing she can shoot the basketball. Uh, fresh out of the car. She gets that one to go. Huggins adding to her rebound total. She's got seven rebounds here. Gabby Callahan has checked in. And she's uh, just setting the offense here. Mariana Resto Santos out top. A little confusion here. Maybe not the normal rotation of girls on the floor for the Lady Bruins. On the cut, nice pass. Nelson, Nelson three on the way off the mark as she had gotten a pass uh, from Callahan. Callahan getting it to Chloe Johnson. Nelson has it. Callahan in the corner. She's going to find Resto Santos. She'll fire the three, just a little short. Needs a little more legs in that one. Rebound was Halley. Amara Halley with that rebound. Honore with the drive. Pivots, created a little space, knocked out of bounds. It's off of Sam Nelson will stay with the Lady Eagles. Honore tied up by Nelson, who's going to help her up. 42 to 2 is the score here in the second. Just 10 seconds to go in the half. I believe Joey Logano is re, uh, leading the NASCAR race in Atlanta today. So, update non NASCAR for the NASCAR fans out here. One second, couldn't get the shot off as Callahan. Passed it cross court to Nelson. Probably should have taken the shot herself. And uh, the score at the half is 42 to two. Lady Bruins in front. They've been sharp in pretty much every area. A little bit. They didn't play great in the first quarter, but the second quarter was phenomenal. Shooting the ball, taking care of the ball, uh, every aspect of the ball game. Obviously handled by the more experienced and uh, just uh, well seasoned. Lady Bruins squad. We'll be back for second half action and first half stats in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Jarrett Cox with HCEC TV, and I'm pleased to be joined by Sean Rich of E-Town Exterminating. Thank you for being here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. So you were telling me before we started that you have been in business for 47 years and it's been family owned and operated this entire time. Yes, uh, this is a company that my parents started back in 1976 and uh, I came in the company uh, about 28 years ago and I've been in the company ever since. You know, I see your people all the time out working, they're working hard and they're doing great work to keep us, keep us safe from all those pests and mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about kind of the, some of the pest control that you do. Uh, we we uh, do a lot of residential and commercial mm -hmm. uh, pest control. We do a lot of monthly services that we do on a regular basis. Um, we do termite control where we put the little green stations mm -hmm. in the ground. It's called Centricon. Uh, we do a lot of mosquito management and mold management. You know, mold management, that's not something that I would have thought of that you do. So I'm glad that somebody's out there doing it. Right. <laughs> need to protect us from those mold men. So you uh, you actually used to play sports. Yes, yes. 
Uh, I in high school I played uh, basketball mm -hmm. and I ran cross country and track at E Town High School, and then I ran cross country at Georgetown College. That's so impressive. You know, it's something that I wish I could have done. And you're, the support that you have given us to allow people to be able to not only run track and play basketball, but people to be able to see their kids on TV. And that's such a special feeling. It's, it is, uh, it's, it, it's a unbelievable uh, that now that we can watch a lot of these sports. Uh, growing up, we were lucky to have one mm -hmm. little picture or maybe a videotape of, of one of our, uh, one of our games, but it's unbelievable what you all do to go mm -hmm. out there and to be able to, uh, put these kids on mm -hmm. live TV and the exposure they get in the community. And we're just glad to be a part of it. And we're really grateful for your support because without you, we would not be able to do what we do. Well, thank you. So if somebody is in need of getting some whether it's mole management or termite or even mosquito control, which is not something that I would have thought of either. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad somebody's keeping those pesky things away from me. Yes. <laughs> if somebody needs that service, how do they go about contacting you? Uh, they can call us on our, uh, on, on our phone. It's 270-737-6900, mm -hmm. uh, or you can get on our website, and we have a uh, contact us, and they can send us an email that way. And that's mugabug.com, correct? Yes, M-U-G-G-A-B-U-G.com. And you know, like I said, you all do fantastic work. I see your men hard at work here around the studio, making sure that you're safe from all those bugs. And hopefully we don't have to worry about moles, but you never know. Well, you never know. <laughs> Rashawn, thank you so much for being here. Okay, it's my pleasure. And thank you so much for watching HCEC TV. Let's get back to some great sports action. bringing the action. Jeremy Miller, Noah Miller, and Lena Swecker are doing the directing, producing camera for us tonight. And we're underway. Missed by Charlie Honore on the first shot of the half. And now Stith driving left hand. Easy layup for Juliana Stith. She had 10 in the first half. She's got 12 now. Allie Link had 11 in the first half. Charlie Honore has, she's gonna fire another three and that's just off the mark there. Rebound and put back, that's Amara Halley. She's got all four of the Lady Eagles points. 44 to four is Halley rebound and put back there. Three on the way, way off the mark for Stith and uh, Soto Castillo comes up with the rebound there. They'll walk it up. Honore's got it there. Oliveira out top now has it. And again, 2-3 zone now for the Lady Bruins. This is the look they ran for the first two weeks of the season. They've really mixed it up with man, 3-2, 2-3, 1-3-1. Pressure as Coach Peterson has kind of added to their repertoire. Steal by Huggins. She gets it to Juliana Stith. Stith pushes the ball. Gets it to Link. 2-3 zone now for the Lady Eagles. Stith open for three, and that's good. Juliana Stith, five quick points here in the second half. She's got 15. She averages 19 on the season, so almost to her season average. I can't see Coach Peterson playing her the entire second half here. Hattie Duckworth had 10 big points in the first half. Sam Nelson made a late three. Again, it's four for Amara Halley for the Lady Eagles. Halley, another one just off the mark, gets her own rebound, tries to go back up, and Huggins blocks the shot. So Halley with four rebounds and four points to lead the Lady Eagles here. Halley doing a really good job. That's got to be your uh, just off the mark Stith rebound Huggins. She could have gone right back up and find Stith again. Back out, they'll reset against the 2-3. Duckworth now finds Stith on the baseline. Eight-footer from the baseline, just a little much. Huggins has got it easy put back for Caitlin Huggins, her first bucket here. But uh, she's got a bunch of rebounds. She's got eight now 
after that rebound and put back 49 to 4, 517 to go. Honore with the ball against this 2-3 zone. Oliveira. Again, size-wise, it's just crispness of passes. Hard to handle the ball for these youngsters. 15 is Kaylee Oliveira, the freshman. Held ball possession arrow is going to go to the Lady Bruins. 49-4. The clock is running. We're in a running clock. This will be over in a hurry here. We know it's over already, but getting ready for some big semifinal action. Extended 2-3 here now. Couldn't find uh, found Julian Stith. Nice interior passing as they go to Blair, and Blair finds Huggins. Huggins now with six points and eight rebounds. Getting close to her average, 51 to four early here. Well, it's 4.12 to go now in the third as this running clock really makes this thing move quickly. Lady Bruins now extending this 2-3 and putting a lot of pressure out top. Oliveira comes up with it. She is turning with it, but hell ball possession error will stay with the Eagles. Honore back to Oliveira. Number one has checked in. Oliveira gets it to, uh, that's Gennato, number one. That's Oliveira. Now Gennato's got it. Turns, finds Amara Halley. Stolen by Duckworth. Knocked loose by number 21, Chloe Nelson. She runs it down on the turnover. Just off the mark. Good looking shot, Charlie Honore, but just couldn't get it to go. She's had some good looks here in the third. Just can't get him to go right now. Wow, kind of double clutch bucket from uh, Juliana Stith. Again, so strong, so solid jump shots. Oliveira doubled there. She's going to try to get the, ooh, Stith tried to jump the passing layer, so I had to get it to Honore as Gennato was covered here. Oliveira's open. She'll fire the three, and it's off the glass and in to Kelly, uh, Kaylee Oliveira. Knocks down her first bucket. Stith trying to match it, just off the mark. And there's Blair. Knocked away by Kaylee Oliveira, but Blair runs it down. Stith doubled here. Links open. She'll fire just off the mark there. Blair with the rebound. There's Link with it. Four Lady Bruins waiting to check in at the uh, table. Nice pass. Blair finds the three open, and that was an easy one as Blair really just lined that up. She's got seven, her first three-pointer. When she has time and can just line it up like that, she has the ability to shoot the basketball. Honore gets it to Gennato. Back to Honore. Honore guarded there as Blair gave the help. <laughs> so knocked out of bounds it will stay with the Lady Eagles but wholesale substitution Stith will stay in but Sam Nelson, Gabby Callahan Chloe Johnson and Abby Vandenberg will check in Oliveira's got it out front Honore with it Oliveira fires way short. I think, uh, let's see, oh, they're going to say it was not, wait a minute, no, it was tipped. I thought it was tipped. That's why it was so short. Vandenberg got her uh, finger on it, tipped it. It will stay with the Lady Eagles. Originally, they were going to call it as just an air ball and out of bounds off the Eagles, but it was tipped. Kaylee Oliveira, Charlie Honore, nice pass there to Halley, blocked by Chloe Johnson. She gets it immediately to Juliana Stith on the outlet. Little Euro step, couldn't get it to go. Chloe Johnson triple teamed after getting the rebound. I challenge Chloe to score the ball tonight. Whoa, Stith, three ball, wow. She's got 20 now. Chloe's got a couple of rebounds, Chloe Johnson. There's Oliveira from deep, no good. Stith with it, that's her first rebound. She averages almost five rebounds a game. Another little 
Eurostep couldn't get it to go. Rebound there by Gennato. Knocked out of bounds by Stiff. And they're just 19 seconds to go in the third. Man, has this gone fast. I can't even get to my reads for our advertisers. I want to do that here at the end of the third quarter to thank the folks who help make Hardin County TV, Hardin County Education and Community Television possible. Long two-pointer just off the mark. Rebound to Gabby Callahan. Finds Stith. Just eight seconds to go. Six, five. I don't know if she knows. Three, two. Jump shot off the glass. No good by Stiff. 59 to 7 is the score. Again, Kaylee Oliveira making a three-pointer to get the, the Lady Eagles to that seven-point mark. This is an HCEC TV student production, Division of Hardin County School Special. Thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Waddell's Auto, and Scrap Metal Recycling, etownapartments.com, West Point Bank, and Etown Exterminating. Tune in weekly for all local HCEC TV programs airing on Brandenburg Telecom. Comcast Cable's Channel 2 and Spectrum Channel 184, all HCEC TV programs on the HCEC TV YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel today to get your local community sports and events. Special thanks to our HCEC TV crew. Again, that's Jeremy Miller, Noah Miller, and Lena Swecker. Thanks for your help in producing this first game of the postseason. Again, uh, it is a blowout. It is the Lady Bruins, all Lady Bruins here in the fourth quarter as, again, this young and just a little overmatched Lady Eagles squad is going to try to obviously grow from this if Coach Arms can keep some of these girls together. The youngins, he may have a chance to put together a squad here as he did last year. Nice give and go. There's going to be a foul call as Stith was getting to the basket. I think that's called on Gennato. Stiff, first one off the mark. Number 13 has checked in for the Lady Eagles. There was no 13 on the KHSAA roster, so I really couldn't tell you who number 13 is. It's a 25, Jaylee Richardson, I don't see. Stiff makes the second. I haven't seen a Jaylee Richardson yet. I don't see a 25 on the bench. Uh, so I'm not sure who number 13 is. I'm sorry, folks, if you are number 13's parents. Apologies, but not on the KHSA roster. Ooh, left hand stiff. Couldn't get it to go. Foul, and she'll go to the line. Stiff will go to the line to shoot two here. She's had a big second and third quarter. Lady Bruins fans cheering wildly. That may be the 1,000th point for Juliana Stiff. She was getting close when I called a game earlier in the year. I had done the math on that. I had not done the math going. Is they're going to call a timeout? That is, I am sure, Juliana Stiff's 1,000th point. Again, I had done that earlier in the year as a – Comparison with Peyton Isom and the great Peyton Bradley, who scored over 2,300 points over at Meade County. But uh, Juliana Stiff, wow. She's got 23 points here. So that is the announcement from PA announcer Malachi Mullins. Uh, Juliana Stith has scored her 1,000th point. She's had a heck of a season, averaging 19 a game. And uh, she was a heck of a player even last year. I think she averaged about 12 a game last year. And uh, even played a significant role, a small role, but a significant role in her eighth grade year last year, a freshman this year. No, I'm sorry. This year she is a junior. Last year as a sophomore. Even as a freshman, played a significant role and a very good Central Harden Lady Bruins squad. It was led by Monica Lindsay and Alyssa Lindsay. We're 721 to go here. Fired up deep just off the mark. Almost got it to go. Again, that was Soto Castillo. Diana was looking for her first points. 
obviously after scoring her thousandth point. Juliana Stith will check out. Johnson a little long with that shot. Vandenberg has the rebound. Callahan will fire for three just off the mark there. Johnson another rebound. She's got four. There's Nelson with it back out top. Mariana Resto Santos. And there's Johnson inside. Oh, she needed to make a move there. She had an opportunity. Santos. Resto Santos in lane. No good. Chloe Johnson. Rebound. Put back in the foul. Called on Janato. So a fifth rebound for Chloe Johnson. And now a bucket. Sorry, I got to give Chloe Johnson a shout out. For those of you who do not know me, I'm the golf coach at Central Harden High School. And Chloe is one of our top five golfers on our region runner up girls' golf team. A fantastic two sport athlete is Chloe Johnson, the freshman. And Charlie Honore <laughs> just again got moving a little too fast. And Coach Arms is saying, listen, you guys, slow down a little bit so you can come under control. Maybe come to a jump stop with two feet and give her the, uh, the control she needs there. Resto Santos with the ball, 64 to 7. So let's talk a little bit about our Tuesday schedule. Callahan just off from three. Love to see her get a couple more looks. There's Nelson for three, way off the mark. Hey boy, Sam Nelson's been a really good shooter of the ball this year. Whoa, high pass. Nelson comes up with it with one hand. Vandenberg trying to get ready to shoot. She's going to drive instead. Nice floater. Now listen, we're going to give Abby Vandenberg some props here. Abby can really shoot the basketball. She's got to continue to improve her athleticism. She has significantly this year, but she's got to improve her athleticism. But she is a real shooter of the basketball, and that was a very smooth look. Nice, Amara Halley. She knocks down another shot. She's got six. Three made buckets. 66 to 9 is the score of Amara Halley. If I'm going to, of course, Charlie Honore does everything for this team handling the basketball, but has not scored in this game. She is their leading scorer and probably their best player, but. Callahan will fire that three. Oh, just off the mark. Johnson, another rebound. Man, she's having a heck of a fourth quarter here inside. <laughs> another one on the way. There it is, Gabby Callahan. Knocks down the three. Very confident just stepping into those. So continuing to substitute. Lady Bruins. Mar Halley, another bucket. Wow. She's got to be the all tournament selection. Again, even though Charlie uh, uh, Honore is a fantastic player. Mara Halley's rebounded the ball, blocked some shots, and now scored eight points. Just off the mark, rest of Santos. Rebound was Chloe Nelson. And there goes Honore again. Getting a couple more here. Foul called, number four. It's Marian, Mariana Resto Santos call for the foul. And uh, Amara Halley will go to the line. It's good. Wow. She's got nine points on the game. Averages two on the season. She is the third leading scorer for this squad, just over two points a game. And that was good as well. Knocks down a pair from the line. Ten points. Amara Halley having a heck of a game here. Off the mark there. Rebound number one there. Back to Resto Santos. Rattles in and out. janato has got the rebound. Tied up. It'll stay with uh, the Lady Eagles who had gotten that rebound. Number one, Kaylee Bradley had tied up the ball there. Number 21, Peyton Linder had also checked into the game. So Linder 
Number one, Kaylee Bradley are on the floor. Hallie again almost got that one to go as well. This is just really interesting. When you see certain girls play like this, you're like, wait a minute, where was that? Well, you've got the subs in, so you've got these girls playing now, these Lady Eagle girls playing against girls who are their own age, in fact. And so you can see that there is some competitiveness here as they play against some freshmen and eighth graders in the Central Harden Lady Bruin program that they can compete a little bit at this level with their peers as opposed to playing against seniors and juniors and sophomores, which makes things a lot tougher. Charlie Honore will check out. Congratulations on a great game for her. And again, that's Chloe Nelson checking out number 21 for the Lady Eagles. Checking back in Diana Soto Castillo and number 13 as well. So Amari, Amari Davis so turned over as Kaylee Oliveira has the ball there. Davis, number 13, freshman post player for this Lady Bruins squad. Soto Castillo gets it to Oliveira. Back to Soto Castillo. She'll fire three just off the mark. Davis with the rebound. 2.15 to go with this running clock. It's going to Linder's going to go to the line. It's number 21. Peyton Linder will go to the line. Shoot a pair. First one just off the mark. Opportunity for Peyton Linder, the youngster, to score in a district contest. Man, that'd be a big deal for a youngster like this. Oh, just short. Good looking form. Rebound to Resto Santos. Oh, an opportunity there for Bradley to shoot it. Didn't shoot the ball. Linder again. Opportunity. Got that one. Peyton Linder with the score. 71 13 is the score right now. With 150 to go. We need to talk a little bit about uh, Tuesday. So the Lady Trojans and the Lady Bruins, as I said, will be. Uh, battling in the first game, the 6 o'clock game. Uh, that has been an 11-point victory in both contests so far this year for the uh, Lady Trojans. And both games very competitive, two and four point types of games through the first half and at some point even late in the second half, the Lady Bruins actually I think was six minutes to go in that first contest, cut it to four, but could get no closer and so uh, the Lady Bruins have done a good job. Coach Glenn Peterson, a fantastic coach. They've done a great job uh, coming up with good game plan for those games. So we'll see what Coach Peterson comes up with. Certainly Coach Isom, our region coach of the year, will have uh, a plan in place to deal with Juliana Stith and her Lady Bruins. But uh, that's going to be a really fun matchup. As I've told you, I have uh, – anointed the Lady Trojans as the favorite to win the region championship as well as this district championship. But it's no walkover, folks. They've got to beat uh, the Lady Bruins, who've played them tough. And then they've got to beat uh, the Lady Panthers, who have beaten the Lady Trojans at one point during this uh, season, earlier in the season, by 3, 56-53 was that score. I am really interested to see uh, John Hart. The Lady Bulldogs played a really tough affair with the Lady Panthers, and that is our second matchup at 8 o'clock Tuesday night. Um, that Lady Bulldogs squad, Desi McAllister has started to play even better than she normally does, which is scary. Callahan three on the way again. That one's good. Boy, if Callahan can get going, then that's fantastic. Some antics over on the bench to celebrate. Callahan knocks down her second three. That's really good for a youngster like Gabby Callahan because she knows she can do it in a varsity game. That's going to give her so much confidence for next year. Travel call, but the clock will continue to run. But let me get back to that John Hart and Elizabethtown game. In that second contest, it was just a two-point victory, 61-59 for the Lady Panthers. The Lady uh, Bulldogs gave them all they can handle. Lady Bulldogs may be the most improved squad for uh, – all of District 17. They gave this North Hard Lady Trojan squad fits in their last contest. It was only a two-point game with just a little bit left 
in that game with about three minutes to go. It was a two-point ball game, so that's going to be a fun one to watch as well. So uh, the final here, 74-13 as the Lady Bruins. We're going to stick around. There's always the announcement of an all-tournament player. Anytime a team is eliminated, they will have an all-tournament player. It's got to be Amar Halley. Again, certainly Charlie Honore. Well, Lady Bruins are headed to the locker room. They need to hang around. They should have hung around here to uh, watch the uh, naming of the all-tournament selection from the Lady Eagles. And Coach Peterson is calling for them to come back. They forgot that that is supposed to happen. So we're going to... Uh, Stay here for just a minute. Again, I'm Paul Gray. Thanks to our uh, crew again, Jeremy Miller, Noah Miller, and Lena Swecker for bringing you this 17th district postseason opener. The Lady Bruins so excited. They just went flying off the floor. Well, they're going to wait for them. They've got to come flying back onto the floor. And uh, they should come to the bench. They're now standing here to watch. They should be coming all the way back to the bench. Juliana Stith kind of standing there, all standing there. and They're going to line up on the court there. Sam Nelson's getting them organized a little bit to honor uh, whoever the all-tournament selection for this Lady Eagle squad is going to be. Mara Haley is uh, named the all-tournament selection for the Lady Eagles. Ten points in this ball game out of the team's 13. Boy, she had herself a ball game. Fantastic job by Amara. And so they'll get some pictures. And uh, it's athletic director Joey Stockton here, North Harden legend, will stand there as he made the presentation. Amara Haley will uh, receive that award. Good job by her. Fantastic finish to the game. She played well throughout. Another one of those youngsters that uh, hopefully Coach Arms can hang on to. She's got a lot of height. She will certainly develop physically as far as strength and in her abilities as well. She could be a heck of a player for this Lady Eagles squad, along with Charlie Honore and several other youngsters that they've got in this program, Oliveira and several others. So um, – We'll see how they develop and what, uh, what they can do with this uh, Lady Eagles squad in the future. But, again, let's get set, folks. Get set for Tuesday night, which is going to be some wild action. Now, certainly the championship game on Thursday night is exciting. You want to see the district champion crown. There will be a lot of intensity for that. But Tuesday night is when is make or break night. Both teams on Thursday night will move on to the region tournament, but if you do not win on Tuesday, you do not go on. Your season is over. In Kentucky, one of the strangest things about basketball is in the district tournament, it is one and done except for in one game. The district championship game, both teams move on to the region tournament. And so uh, kind of a strange setup. You can lose one if you lose the right one and still move on and maybe even get to the that is true. How true on Tuesday night. If you don't win, you don't advance. So, 6 o'clock game. Uh, North Harden and Central Harden, please join us at 6 for that ball game. Uh, and then uh, at 8 o'clock, we'll have the town against John Harden. And I'm looking forward to matchups. I hope you'll be there to watch. And, um, again, thanks to our crew. I'm Paul. Good night, everybody. Thank you.